Welcome everyone to Successful Toy Podcast. A big thank you to our audience watching on Facebook and YouTube and to those tuning in on WWRCK Radio, Spotify, Listen Notes, Amazon Music, Samsung Podcast, and Podcasts Index. Your support means the world to us and we're thrilled to have you join us. Let's dive into today's special episode. Hey y'all, hey, I'm here today with a panel, my first panel, and it's men versus women. <laughs> so, you guys submitted questions for us to voice our opinion on. So, I want to see what's the different way. We know that the men think different than the women, or the women think different than men. And sometimes men and women think equally. But on this episode, I want to see what it is. So, y'all ready to get into it? Yes. Yeah. I'm okay. a little nervous. The way you acting right now, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I promise you, we ain't getting the people too much in our business, I don't think. But um, just be yourself. Don't be nervous. So I have Coach Damian Cooper with me. Where are you from? Originally from Queens, New York, currently residing in New Mexico. Uh, Period. Yep. Um, Professor T, where are you from? Uh, from Georgia, by the way of Delaware, now residing in hot Arizona. Girl, see how you lived uh, I went kayaking in Arizona and I came out with a suntan. I didn't know I can get a suntan. Tracy, <laughs> <laughs> where you from? I'm from Florida, but I live in Georgia now. Period. ATL. Period. Mm-hmm. Victor! What's happening? Um, what's happening, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Victor. I'm from Florida, still in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of we got a lot of Floridians in here, and you know what Charlemagne say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I defy what Charlemagne say. <laughs> yeah, he he ain't never lie though. He ain't never lie. So um, let's get into it. If you had the opportunity, would you be a stay-at-home wife or husband? Who want to go first? I go first. <laughs> Everybody looking like, do I? Will I? I go first. I mean, a stay-at-home wife, it's not too bad. It's a lot of responsibilities because you got stuff. You got to keep up with the doctor's appointments. You got to keep up with the kids. You got to keep up with your husband. You got to cook. You got to clean. You got to do this, that, and the third. I say if you're going to be a stay-at-home husband or wife, just make sure you have your own income coming in as well, like a little side gig or an online store or something like that. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Like I I was telling Coach earlier, I just retired from the corporate world on Tuesday to be a stay-at-home entrepreneur. (laughs) So it's like... And I told myself the same thing that you were saying. I was like, now nah, I got to keep the house up. Now, remind you, we just moved into our house. We closed on our house yesterday. So I got to keep the house up. Thank you. I got to keep the house up. I got to cook. I got to make sure clothes wash and stay on top of everything I have going on as well. So I feel that. So, yeah, but I'm still going to have my doing my thing where money can be coming in, though. I ain't finished just right. behind, behind. So, yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Go ahead, next person. I mean, technically, I am a stay-at-home wife. <laughs> Not that I'll let you got going on. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> I mean, true. But, I mean, technically, I am. I mean, even though, you know, me and my wife, we work together, like, it, it's always that challenge of, like you said, you got to keep this together, you got to worry about doctor's mm-hmm. appointments, all that stuff. But... It's like a good thing, but it's a bad thing because sometimes I get tired of looking at her. You know what I mean? Because we both we both work from home, so it's like we work for ourselves. So we're around each other 24-7. So it's like, yeah, I like it, but at the same time, it's like I be needing people to talk to outside of that because mm-hmm. she she drives me crazy, y'all. 
Oh yeah, I can feel that too. Yeah, yeah I was thinking that too. I was like, okay, but when I need a breather, because work normally would be I breather. She at work, I'm at work. Then we come home. It's hey, babe, I miss you. But now it's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I feel you. Now let's see what these men got to say because they all quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> y'all don't want y'all wouldn't be a stay at home husband. I, I wouldn't know what it looks like. I've always worked outside of the home, um, but I think I think it's to each his own. It's about communicating with your partner what that looks like. Mm -hmm. But but I also think everybody needs their me time. If you're locked up in the house looking after all of the things that are happening under the roof, um, I think whether you're a man or a woman, you also need your me time, whether that's some shopping therapy or going to the movies or hanging with the girls or the guys. I just think it depends on, on your dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to pick back off what Coach said, I definitely agree. It definitely depends on the me time and stuff. And also, I personally may not do it because I remember I was in the pandemic and when everybody was working from home, I was working from home. It's like sometimes you go crazy if you're just sitting in the house all day, you know? Mm-hmm. And you don't know how to act when you get in the real world. So you overdo it. You say you're going to have one drink, you have 10. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel you on that. Uh, why do men hold on to women they don't want a relationship with? Oh, that's a good one. Victor, you can go first. <laughs> <laughs> all right um the reason i say that is because sometimes it's pride and ego like um sometimes it's you just don't want to see this person happy or you just don't want to don't want to feel like you're losing that emotional attachment to them because it's like maybe they're doing something for you that you know if they move on from you you're not gonna get it so sometimes it's just to hold on to it for no reason which is I find blasphemous, you know what I'm saying? If you don't, if you're not gonna do right by somebody, you need to just go ahead and let them go. Mm. Okay, coach. Um, I would say that sometimes men hold on to women they don't want is, is because of the qualities that they see in that woman. Sometimes it's a mothering, nurturing quality um, that that man hasn't evolved out of to where he's able to stand on his own. Uh, sometimes the sex could be amazing and he doesn't want to let her go because of that. Um, uh, sometimes it could be a trauma bond there um, that that person might bring out what that person needs from their childhood. And they're still trying to hold on to that. So it, it can be, you know, multiple reasons why. But those are those are three. That's good. Ladies, what y'all think? I agree. I agree, especially with um oh, yeah. yeah, I definitely agree with all that. Okay, so us women, why do we hold on to men that we don't want a relationship with? Mm. Oh damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, le I'm leaning in, Victor. I want to hear this. Yeah, I want to hear this too. Come on, come on with it. It can be, it can be like Coach Cooper said. It could be the sex is amazing, or you like how this man make you feel like you the only woman in the world when y'all with each other. Um, I don't know. It's just basically how a person treats you, and like I said, the sex and all that stuff. And you know, you really don't want a relationship with this person, but mm -hmm. it's just something that just keeping you messing with this person. Yeah, that is true because yeah. it's like it's the sex and then you see something, you see something good in this person that other people don't see. So you praying that it it'll come out and they'll change and <laughs> it just don't be happening like that. But you be having so much hope for that person and it just don't be. So that's why sometimes you stick around because it's like, OK, one day, one day they'll see that. <laughs> I'm that person for them. They will see it and they just never see it. Or when they do see it, it's too late. You're gone already. Mm. But not only that, I also think past experience. Um, 
a lot of times, especially us women, like growing up, especially if we had like two parent households, like I did, it was always that sense of, I want somebody just like my dad. You know what I mean? Not I understanding, not understanding that, okay, your mom might be getting a black eye behind closed doors that you don't even know about. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Because they don't keep that information like privy to the children so then when you go and jump into a relationship you're like oh he's just like my dad and then he started whooping you behind and then you're like okay wait hold on but then you're holding on to it because in the back of your mind you're still that little girl that's saying i want somebody like my dad mm -hmm. not realizing that these are all of the qualities that your dad had that now i have right. so that could also be it too right that's true too now but I am, I was never in a two parent household. My grandma raised me. Then I moved with my mom, and it was her and my stepdad. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I I ain't never said I want somebody like my dad. I so, did, and I regret it. Damn, I, I I really do. I'm sorry you went through that. <sighs> four four words after sex. Four. Ooh. Don't touch me. <laughs> or come lock your door. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. That was good. That was good. <laughs> I needed it. Yeah. That's it. That's what you'd be saying. Yeah. Oh, four. What y'all be saying? I can't say four. I just got three. Yeah, me too. <laughs> no touch me. Yeah, right. it's me. Get off me. Get off me. Is come like your door. You <laughs> say get off me. Yeah, get off me. When I'm done, get off me. Damn, Don't touch was, me. is is this a bad sexual experience? <laughs> it be bad I'm good shit. <laughs> no, okay. you know how sometimes it just be too good. Then when you get uh -huh. done, you be like, all right, I'm not. Don't touch yeah, me afterwards. Don't touch like, me. I'm good. Like. Yep. Yeah. Flag on the play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. The men, because I ain't hearing nothing from y'all. Because y'all gonna hit us with these bad experiences, but I would <laughs> say ready for it. another round. <laughs> there you go. Not, it's not bad experiences. We saying if it was really, really good, it's like don't touch me. Like I don't touch me. <laughs> So, so four, four words, four words for me would be thank you for that. I mean, I think a lot of times guys we're not appreciative of mm -hmm. of a woman opening themselves up to us for one. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just showing just showing appreciation because she didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're such a gentleman. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, Victor. I already said my four words. We didn't hear you. I said ready for another round. Oh, I <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, we're going to let y'all marinate on that ready for another round while we go on a commercial break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Experience top-notch hairstyling wherever you are. Diverse Styles, your go-to traveling stylist based in North Carolina, specializes in braids, sew-ins, plaits, and locks. Follow at Diverse Styles LLC on Instagram and book your appointment today for a fresh and fabulous look. Okay, now this one, y'all, ain't gonna even lie. I was waiting for this one. Can a man lose value based on the women he fucks? Mm. And me, I say yes. Yeah. <laughs> because I say yes because it's like the type of caliber you are and then you go and we send some mm, I don't want to say dirty girls, but we seeing some little yeah. dragons that we know that's dingy and dirty. Like, you F that ill. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yes, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. So, man, what y'all think? Can women use lose theirs? 
I think we can. And it happened to me before. Yep. It happened to me before. <laughs> yep. I, I, I didn't know no better. I was new to a city and I started dating somebody because I'm the type of person like I don't date people for what they have and all that type of stuff. So I didn't I'm new to a city. I don't know the boy, but he was a known person. And it's like everybody that know me was like, what the fuck you doing dating him? What the fuck you doing fucking with him? And I'm like, why does everybody keep saying this? Like, what is he a dirty nigga or something? And then everybody was saying, like, it's just he they just pick on him, like he's another. I'm like, hmm. yeah. And yeah, from there, like my 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 dick rate had went down for real. Oh Lord. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just being honest. Yeah. Not me. So I don't I don't think a man's value necessarily goes down. Like if you know if he's a if he's a high value man and he chooses to get with what we used to say back in the hood, a chicken head, that doesn't necessarily mean his value goes down. He just he just wanted a a freak um for a moment or a season. I don't think a person's value has to go down just because of who they choose to sleep with. Um, yeah, that's that's just my thought. Yeah, uh, to pick it back up what Coach is saying, I definitely agree with Coach. Um, I, if it's just a one night stand or quick fling, your value shouldn't go down. But if it's something long term and this person is not adding value to you, this person is not helping you build something, then yeah, your value is going to go down because. They're gonna people are gonna look at you like, why are you with this person? But they're not making you better. They're stressing you out, and they're not doing anything for you. So, if it's long term, yeah, the value will go down. But if it's short term, nah, just on to the next one. Next, that's that sounds good. But I'm tell y'all, y'all value go down. <laughs> So you know, what I'm saying, but so who though? Because it could be, it could be like a person like me. Like if I was into you or some shit like that, and I see the type of females that you like, it's like ill. Like, like now, my cool cat ain't gonna even get wet for you. It ain't gonna jump for you. I ain't gonna even look at you the same. So it's like, did you fuck anything? Yeah. Yeah, I see. I see Victor's. I see Victor's point, but I see yours too, Toya. But I. But I also think it's a self-esteem thing. I don't think anybody on the outside gets to rate my value, regardless of what my choices are, because every, everybody's on a continuum, right? Yeah. Even if it's three months, six months, a year, um, my value can still be the same. It's just that I'm on this path with this energy in this season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, tell them people that made my value go down. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all hear that? Up my value back up. No, <laughs> I mean, I let me say this about value, though. If you value yourself, you shouldn't give a fuck about what other people think. You know what I'm saying? If, Trust me. Yeah. Yes, sir. Trust me, I definitely don't. Victor, you already know. I don't get too flying. <laughs> <laughs> Why y'all cheat and feel it's okay to do it, but not okay for your partner? And this for everybody, just for men. It's for all, it's for all of us. Mm -hmm. I have never, I I have never cheated on my partner. I have cheated in the past with the. Yes, I felt like it was okay for me to do that. <laughs> but when they did it, I was heartbroken. <laughs> for real, but it was a whole bunch of bullcrap going on in that relationship. But it's not okay on neither end. It's like y'all putting each other health at risk, basically. Each other life in danger, that's how I see it. But you know, the older you get, the wiser you get. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. If you feel like you need to cheat, just be with somebody else. Like, mm -hmm. or be yeah. single. Yeah, be single. And you can do whatever you want and flow and not have to worry about nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. But don't be a mean because I had something good at home and had no reason to cheat and I did cheat all because something else that I like. And was it worth it? No, it was not. So, yeah, don't be mean. You got mm -hmm. some good. Yeah. 
But you live and you learn, and I learn. Yeah. Absolutely. I've never, cheated, I've never cheated either. Um, I know how that feels to be cheated on. So I was all, I guess you could say I was like the sheltered one as far as the relationship goes. Like, okay, I got to make sure I do this, 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 and that to make sure that, you know, it's, it's going strong, like especially in past relationships. So when it came down to the cheating, it was more so me understanding that you can't put everything that you think is good into a relationship because that might be a turn off for some people, which that was the reason why you cheated. You see what I'm saying? So I, I don't think it's cool in any aspect. I feel like even text messages with old flames is still considered cheating in my book. It is. This is the thing because I feel like if you got out of that situation, if that situation hurt you, why are you still going back to it? That's yeah. still a form of cheating to me. But yeah. yeah, I'm I'm one of the rare ones that never cheated. Everybody's like, you never cheated? No. <laughs> I never I never believed in that. Like that just if I got something good, why am I like Toy said, why am I gonna mess that up just for something that's temporary and then you get over there the next thing you know it's not even as good as you thought it was now you mad because you done use your little cheat pass for for something nothing. that wasn't even good <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i've been i've been on both sides of it i've been cheated on and i have cheated um but i think it goes to standards right i mean do you value marriage do you value commitment do you value sex over commitment um and I think, I think it's important, generally speaking, that we don't co-sign on behavior that we don't want to show up in that thing that we value. So if you, if you are with a young lady or, 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 or a gentleman and you're co-signing on behavior outside of marriage, don't think that marriage is gonna fix that person. Um, that's just my thought. Yeah, right. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Victor? Uh, now I've, I'm one to make you can make it three people that have never cheated, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm from believer in if I got something good, I'm gonna roll with it until the wheels fall off. Now, now, um, I've known people that cheated, and I just I looked at them funny, I'm like you got a really good person at home, like why are you gonna cheat on them? And also, mm -hmm. if you're gonna cheat, you might as well leave them because you're clearly not happy with them. So, and yeah. if you go back to them, are you did you really learn your lesson though? Yeah, I did. Bitch, I walk a straight line now, bitch. I don't see nobody in the world. It's only me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I learned my lesson because I really didn't have a reason to cheat. Like, this girl was giving me everything. She treated me better than anybody ever did in my whole life of me ever being in a relationship. And it's like, I just made a stupid ass decision. So thank God she took me back and we worked on it and we had couple therapy and it's working for us. And I am like this, when I tell y'all I'm so, maybe I needed that to be the person she needed me to be. Maybe. Yeah. But I, that ain't no excuse, but I'm just saying. Yeah. But yeah, I did learn my lesson. I don't know if anybody else learned their lesson, but I did. Oh, I, I definitely learned mine, Toy. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, in, I'm in a very committed relationship, and yeah. Yeah. See? So, Victor, yes, you do learn your lesson from cheating. <laughs> you might, but people that are listening <laughs> might yeah. not, because I've seen Mars shows back in the day when people oh, came Lord. on again and again and again, like, how many goddamn times do you have to come on this show to learn your lesson? <laughs> Not talking about Maury. Yeah. <laughs> that was entertainment. That was entertainment. He paid them to come on the show. Mm -hmm. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Why entertain someone else instead of the person that's taking good care of you? You dumb. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call it. You gotta be dumb. Like, what the hell? For real. For real. Oh, they lacking. Okay, they can be taking good care of you, but they could be lacking in a lot of things. Patient. It can be lacking in, you know, a lot of things that all of the time. Yeah. Yep. So just because they taking good care of you, that don't mean that they giving you all of them because they can be taking good care of you, but out in the world taking good care of someone else too. Facts. 
And the materialistic girls, they are gonna be the fuck quiet and say, "Oh, long as he taking care of home, I get fuck what he do." No, you that's don't. You're stupid. <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's they I'm lying talking. to themselves. Yeah. 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 Uh-uh. So how y'all feel, man? I think Close heart matters are are difficult, and sometimes life 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 just be life, and sometimes I mean. It, it goes it goes to the character and, and integrity of the person that you're with. I mean, kind of goes back to what Victor said. If you're feeling valued and loved in a relationship, I think you should reciprocate that rather than looking outside of that for somebody else. And 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 just to be specific on your question, I think there's a difference between entertaining and acting upon. Mm-hmm. As a man, I'm still gonna find other women attractive. But whether I actually pursue and execute, I think it really speaks to my character. You, you're not going to stop other women from being beautiful, and yeah. women are not going to stop other brothers from being fine. It mm-hmm. goes back to your character integrity that you bring to that relationship. And you can't control if someone compliments you. You can't control if you're looking because everybody you have eyes, you go and look. But right. just because you're looking, that don't mean you have to indulge in the bullshit. Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like my grandmother used to always say, you wear compliments like cologne. You put it on at the end of the night, you take that right off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You go on to the next day now. Yeah. And you ain't got to be nasty about it either. You could just say thank you and keep it moving. That's that, it. that part. That yeah. part. We're going to go on a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Okay. Are you ready to show off your success? Elevate your style with our range of apparel and accessories. From small to 5XL, we've got your shirts, hoodies, and tumblers to match every size and taste. Shop your favorite items today at successful-toy.square.site slash and let your success shine. If you see your child getting jumped, are you jumping in? Yes. What kind of question is that, baby? Yes. I am. Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't even have kids and I'm jumping in. Like, go <laughs> <don't care>. cat. Same here. <laughs> I don't even have kids either. And I'm like, ain't nobody, ain't nobody laying a hand on my child. Hell no. I swear to God. Damn no, you, what no, you doing? No, no, the mama, the daddy, whoever else. I swear to God, baby. I what? fight infants. I fight infants, toddlers, minors, teenagers, <laughs> adults. It's, it's a unanimous, unanimous heck yeah. So, next question. <laughs> when, breaking, when breaking up, do you do it face to face or over the phone or let them find out by lack of communication? Mm. I'm texting. I don't want to talk to you. If I'm done with you, I'm done with you. Here's here for that last. By the way, uh, we're done. I don't have nothing else to say to you. Have a good life. And you block from everything. I don't. What I, I need I to be getting in the face with you for, so you can sit here and try to talk me out of bringing out of it. <laughs> Not doing it. <laughs> I ain't even giving you no closure. I'm just gonna block you from everything and just stay away from you. And wherever I know that you go, I ain't going there no more. So we won't run into each other. Mm-hmm. And then if I know that we already before we started dating, we never hung out in the same places. Oh, I'm good. Right. I ain't giving you no closure. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, I think it depends on the level of crazy. If you know, if it's a, a real, <laughs> real nice energetic vibe, it might be something that I do in person. But if it's a toxic, fatal attraction type vibe, you might just get ghosted or get a text. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. If it's toxic, I might be fighting if it's on face to face. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you face to face or in text message, because if you face to face, y'all gonna fight. If you text message, they finna get in their car, come to your house and be ignorant. I done did that one before. That's why I said from, I'm just ghosting now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Listen, I, I would just appreciate it if you just tell me that um we're done. You know what I'm saying? We ain't gotta meet in person and all like that. So <laughs> and also we're done. It is what it is. Right. Just communicate. That's it. For you. Right. Uh-uh. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. What was your most recent ex zodiac sign? Would you ever date that sign again? Why or why not? So I got a question before we answer this. When they say recent ex, like what they mean, like 
they saying like last the year last you dated before the, you dated the last person you dated before your relationship now that's what i'm saying yeah thinking. that makes sense to me all right because i was like i mean when you saying recent what do you mean recent okay go ahead so i'm gonna go first um it was the Aries, and no, I would not ever, ever date an Aries again. I th I dated three of them bitches back to back, and none of them showed me nothing different. <laughs> Aries for me, too. Damn. And I'm currently with one, and I dated one before. So, yeah, it was three for me, too. And, um... <laughs> They got a lot of ways, you know, similar ways, but <laughs> go ahead. Who's next? Well, I guess I'll add to it. Uh, mine's was in Aries as well. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so, uh, I was. Absolutely saying I'll never do that again. <laughs> so I don't went from an Aries and now I'm married to a Cancer. So if y'all know, y'all know. But yeah, I would I would absolutely never do an Aries again. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. You can put a gun in my head and make me. You can offer me 10 million. I still wouldn't. Listen, I'd rather go stay in jail for 12 years before I date an Aries again. I swear to God. Damn. You can't do it. So I'm with, you, I'm with you when you're right, Professor. Get you. along. Like I like I like Aries. You know, like I say, they have a bunch of the ones that I dated have uh, some similarities, but everybody had their own thing going. So I don't know. We get along. Like one of my sisters, the Aries, we get along real good. I feel like they're better as friends than romantic partners, from my perspective. Like mm -hmm. I'm cool with being friends with you, but when it comes down to being in a relationship. No, like y'all is just y'all switch and it's just you know, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I never had a friend that was that. I, I, I never had. A, I don't think so. If I did, I don't remember them day my friend no more. The guys. Yeah, I would. I would rock with the same sign again. I don't. You know. Um, what was they? So I'm not real skilled. So um, I'll, I'll say June between the 8th and the 15th. What is that? A Gemini. Okay. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not real skilled on uh, dates and things like that, but you know. I would. The only Gemini I ever dated was my middle child father. When I tell you that man used to beat the fuck out of me, and I ain't never look at a Gemini again. Mm. Damn. Mm. Uh -uh. Mm. So what is uh, what is September fifteenth? Because that's 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 what I'm rocking with now. What's that? Oh, I think Virgo. Yeah. Mm. Virgos are good people. They yeah. are. Virgo, Virgos are good very people. good people. Thank you for saying that in case she watches, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I never dated one. I totally agree. Virgo, but I never dated one. Yeah. I had I I I I've I messed with a Virgo before. They could be yeah. they just they got ways, but they they could be. They're very loyal individuals. Like if you rock with them, they gonna rock with you, like, and they're always gonna be transparent with you. And I can say that because my mom is a Virgo, my brother is a Virgo. Why well, actually have three brothers that are Virgos? My sister's a Virgo, my grandmother in law, she's a Virgo, so they're very yeah, he's surrounded by fucking Virgos. <laughs> yeah, Taurus, and it frustrates me. Dang, Damn, that's yeah, crazy. <clears throat> It's oh, been really? a really sweet, genuine vibe, very transparent, like you're saying, Professor T. So yeah, I'm I'm digging it. Yeah. yeah I like that. How yeah. long y'all um, been to coach? So we started in July of last year. So July of this year will be a year. Um and okay. she's in Arizona, actually. Oh wow. Okay. Yep. Chandler, Arizona. Oh, okay. Okay. Not too far. Yep. <clears throat> All righty. Victor. 
Well, let's make it four out of five that then their ex was an Aries. <laughs> um, it's wow. like it's just I can't I can't rock with somebody who can't take accountability for their actions. Like no. my ex will tell me, even when I'm wrong, I can j- justify my actions. Mm-hmm. No, if you wrong, just Tracy say I'm said sorry if you're wrong. <laughs> Hell no. You better so, preach. As well. That's I, I don't need no more than Aries. Some noise now y'all pray for me. I'm, I'm currently talking to a tourist right now, so y'all, yeah, she well, said right, she's hold a hold good people, you know. Hard. Not too much, on that <laughs> Professor T could give you the tea on the tourist now. <laughs> Taurus seem to be pretty good people. Actually, hold up, I think she's a Gemini because her birthday is June 11th. I think she's a Gemini. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She's a Gemini. Yeah. Buyer beware, Victor. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. So far, she's been checking off all the boxes. She was hanging out with me last night when we were recording. So you know, okay. okay. Don't 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 get a mad now. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all remember Victor from Liquor Talk? <laughs> no. We don't want to have no RIPs going on there. Oh. No. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We're gonna take <laughs> we gonna take another break and we'll be right back. <laughs> Experience beauty on the move with Untouchable Lash and Brow Beauty. Based in North Carolina, where your go-to traveling lash and brow tech specializes in waxing, tinting, and Hannah brows. Classy volume and mega volume lashes. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Untouchable Lash and Brow Boutique. And unlock exclusive perks with our loyalty program. Don't miss our Saturday special. Book your appointment for a luxurious experience. Okay, we are finally at our last question. Y'all ready? Mm-hmm. How long is too long to date someone before making it exclusive? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Because you don't really want to rush. Oh. Exactly. So it's like, what is the limit? Like, right. I don't think it should be no. Yeah. yeah I mean. First, like, don't let's exclude the um the the um the LGBTQIAZUP community because baby, because <laughs> because baby, they fall in love one day and then next day you be married, living together, and all that. So we we gonna talk about men and women. Like, how long did it take? How long should? you like get to know each other before you stay exclusive but i just feel like it's no limit like you right. need to take their time to get to know each other for real for real because i don't been in too many situations to where i dive head first in relationships and really didn't know the person and they don't move in with me and it's like fucking chaos so it's like I still don't know them. I still can't tell you nothing about them to this day because I didn't get a chance to know them. Right. Yeah. I feel like it should be a limit. I think half a year is a good gauge. Things tend to end how they begin. And I think half of a year is, is a good amount of time to kind of feel out how somebody is going to be and whether they're worth additional time. That's just me though. My cutoff game is 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 tight. <laughs> Dang. So when you don't ignore red flags. Do I ignore red flags? Yeah, like if they do one thing wrong, do you ignore it? Or when you see a red flag, like do you ignore it or you just look over it and keep going? No, I, I address it. Um and, and I think you know, people are on on their own journey. But I, I just know six months is my is my key milestone when it comes to relationships. If if I'm not seeing what I need to see, and I and I'm not comfortable bringing what I feel I can bring or need to bring, I will I will cut it off and keep it moving. Okay. That's real. Yeah, because I had a problem with red flags. I ain't know how to ignore them hoes. I still kept going and going and going and going. <laughs> Yeah. It be it be like that sometimes, especially when 
they're saying all the right things. So like before mm. me and my wife actually got married, like when we first started dating and she would always ask me the same question as far as what are you looking for in a partner? And I would never answer that question. And she was like, why are you avoiding that question? And I said, because if I tell you what I'm looking for, you're going to try to be that. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather for you to just show me who you are. So then I can say to myself, either I'm a sink or swim. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So that's just literally how I always, you know, came at the relationship. Now, mind you, we've known each other years before we even stepped into getting involved with each other. And we was, when I tell y'all, we would spend like, 10 to 12 hours a day on the phone. She was working at Amazon at the time. I was in corporate. And you know, at Amazon, you name, you're not really supposed to have your phone like on the floor. Well, how the but, hell she did that one? In Delaware, we had we had our picks of how we could do it. Mm -hmm. But literally, we would spend like 10, 12 hours on the phone just, you know, getting to, to learn each other on a level that's outside of just friendship. So that really helps as well. Like, you can't expect to go into anything and not know who you're dealing with. Like mm -hmm. I said, if I was to answer that question, I probably would have got a totally different person than who I'm actually married to. Right. So it really, it really just shows you like, okay, this is who you say you are. Okay, now that's when I got to start looking for those red flags and say, okay, well, you said you do this, but you just did the complete opposite. Those mm -hmm. are the things that you really got to decipher out. So it's really no limit of, okay, if I'm with this person for four years, I know by year five, I need to be married. No, because everybody's story is different. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't believe, like, me and my wife got married nine months after we made it official, after mm -hmm. knowing each other for years. A lot of people said, well, that's too soon. It was perfect timing for us mm -hmm. because we were really tired of dealing with the same thing from the same type of people. So when we finally got together, it was click for us. It was easy for us. We had already took that initiative to get to know each other. So mm -hmm. it was like a why not moment. So I just realized from what Professor just said, that's why I fucked up in all of my relationship. I always told them motherfuckers what I was looking for. Mm. Yeah. Because for a certain period of time, they be that person that mm -hmm. I'm looking for. And now it's been a waste of time. I'm gonna be all day. They've been faking the whole time, and then you have yeah. to it. And it's all because I told them what I was looking for. Yeah. yeah, and you gotta also think about it too. If you tell somebody what you're looking for, they can only play that role, but for so long. Yeah. Eventually, mm. their true colors are going to see through. So it's like, nah, I'm not going to even tell you what I want. I just want you to be you because. You're going to show me who you are anyway. Yeah. So why me adding a whole paragraph of what I'm looking for onto your plate just to confuse you? <laughs> because that's literally what it's going to do. It's going to confuse you. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That's some, that's some good free game, T. Yes. I like that. Mm hmm Damn. See, I love doing my podcast. When I tell y'all, I'm always learning something and realizing things like, oh, that's why I fucked up that. Watch when I go see my therapist Thursday. I'm going to tell her. <laughs> tell my therapist I realized something <laughs> Victor we can't you're hear on, you you're on mute bro mm -mm. oh me and the aliens that came and got them yep <laughs> I got you my boy you shouldn't have been at the park see <laughs> Well, okay. I don't know what's going on, so we can't pause. But um, that was it for all the questions. Victor? Nope, can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Coach, let the people know um, how to find you. Tell them, like, give them a little bit of insight about you and what you have going on and how they can find you. And if you're looking to be on more podcasts, your booking info and everything. Um, yeah, you can find me on all platforms as the purse dev coach, except for LinkedIn, because that's my my um, my professional workspace. But yeah, the purse dev coach. I also have a link tree. Um, DM me on Facebook, Instagram. Let me know that you watch the podcast and I, I you know, I'll reach back out to you. Um, Toy, thank you for having me. 
You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. Tracy, let them know how to find you and everything that you have going on. Um, it's, my name is Tracy. You can find me um, on Instagram, Tracy1984. You can find me on Facebook, Tracy Gibbs. Um, if you haven't found a taxi yet and don't hold IRS, y'all can DM me. You can have a talk over the file on if you don't hold it. Um, look for me if y'all need to purchase a home, sell a home, whatever, in the near future. I'll be able to help you do that. And my side thing, if y'all do edibles, eat edibles, drink the juice, I have all that. Cookies, brownies, whatever. You ship? Yes, I ship. I got to get get at you for the housewarming party. Uh (laughs) Okay, okay. (laughs) Definitely. Keep me posted. Let me know. Uh Professor T, let the people know who you are. And how they can find you and everything that you have going on. I got too much going on. I thought we talked about this already. It was behind, it was a, it was behind the scene. It was behind the scene. <laughs> but um, you can find me on all social media platforms, Professor T. Grayson, um, Instagram, Linktree, Spotify. I got a Spotify playlist of all of my marketing classes. I'm actually about to be starting a mentoring strip program where basically I am going to be taking on five to 10 different small businesses. And I'm actually going to give you my PR blueprint. So you're going to have access to digital billboards, um, different radio connects, different cannabis connects. So that's all going to be in a gigantic package for you. So that is going to be launching on my birthday. So May 19th. So make sure you follow me so that y'all can get that information and yeah, that's about it. Hopefully by next year, I'll have my final degree in um, sports and entertainment management. So oh. wish me luck, y'all. I got to get these hours done. <laughs> you, got, you got this and God got you. Yes. That's me and Victor got going on. Victor, <laughs> can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear y'all. Can y'all hear me? Right. Yes. Now you have to let the people know how to find you and give them a little insight about you. All right, you people, you guys can find me at Liquor Talk Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, um, X, or formerly known as Twitter. Um, also, Liquor Talk, you can find a podcast on wherever you get your podcasts at, Apple, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, wherever at. You can catch Toy on episode 299, and you can also catch Toy on episode 300. And also, Toy gave us probably the best episode on her first appearance, which was Episode 286 or 287, you know what I'm saying? Somewhere in there, you know. So, y'all check out Look at how we, we wrapping up season six this month, and oh then we're going to go on hiatus for a little while. Period. Okay. I want to say thank you guys for joining the show. I appreciate y'all for stepping on the panel, and we will see you guys in the next episode. All right. Thank you for joining us on today's journey with the Successful Toy Podcast. Before we part, remember to empower your success journey with our exclusive Are You Successful merchandise and arm yourself with insights from our free ebook, 10 Things People Don't Tell You When You're Running a Business, available on Linktree forward slash Successful Toy Podcast. And if you've got a story the world needs to hear, we want to feature you. Reach out to us at SuccessfulToy at gmail.com to discuss becoming a guest on the show. Until next time. Keep innovating, and here's to your success.